Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and this was a, a rather surprising headline. Uh, here it is from a crypto media outlet, You Today. Former Ripple CTO cannot access his Bitcoin wallet that is now worth $231 million. This is a crazy freaking story. And uh, his is actually more interesting. So there's all sorts of people, mind you, that got into the, the Bitcoin way, way, way back in the day, in the first, you know, one, two, three years. And uh, maybe they were mining Bitcoin and they, they had it stored somewhere. But then, you know, this it's magic Internet money. You don't think about it. You think it's going nowhere. You know, hard drives fail. You lose, uh, you know, external hard drives, that type of crap. And then you lose your private keys and then your Bitcoin's gone forever. Like I've seen these stories. His is a little bit more interesting. And also, my gosh, that's one of the bigger uh, accumulations that, I, that I've seen. Now, maybe back then it wasn't a ton. But uh, it's, it's, it's one of the bigger accumulations that um, has been cited in terms of the value in uh, 2021 that I've, I've ever seen. This is, this is gigantic. I had no idea. And so it's just interesting that the story's out here, but it's, uh, it's, it's worth being aware of. So that's why like, I, I always have just treated my crypto like one day it will be worth a fortune, and I certainly hope it will be. Uh, you never know, though. And then uh, also, I've got an update uh, from a, um, a cryptocurrency exchange that is going the path that Uphold has taken. Uphold being a, a United States-based cryptocurrency exchange, which is, uh, no, we do not believe XRP is a security, and uh, we're not going to stop selling it. So I want to give you all the specifics on that as well. Now, I do want to be clear that I, uh, I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I just think it's uh, fun as an enthusiast to talk about these crypto-related topics, and I run a YouTube channel as a hobby. That's all that it is. And you can see uh, Stefan Thomas actually tweeted this. The original story is from the New York Times, and he wrote, A painful memory. I hope others can learn from my mistakes. Test your backups regularly to make sure they are still working. An ounce of foresight could have prevented a decade of regret. That said, I'll do what I always do, which is focus on building things. Uh, for example, Interledger. And at this point, so he left He left Ripple, and it was a fine departure. He's, um, you know, not, nothing bad happened. He's just running uh, his own company, Coil, now, which is working on a new form of web monetization. And uh, their product is actually live. It's amazing. But uh, here we go. While Ripple is facing regulatory fallout in the U.S., its former chief technology officer has another problem on his mind. Figuring out the password to his Bitcoin fortune. According to a wild story published by the New York Times, Stefan Thomas cannot access his Iron Key hardware wallet with 7,002 coins that are worth $231 million at press time. So think about this. like Those are his he legally owns them, cannot access that. So his net worth is over $231 million, at least at press time. Obviously, Bitcoin's volatile. Think about that. So he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, but it doesn't matter. That is crazy to think. And then they had this little subheading uh, titled, he has two attempts left. And I saw that and I was like, uh oh, I think I know where this is going. Check it out. This is, this is what makes it particularly interesting. One of Bitcoin's biggest selling points is that it makes it possible to be your own bank, meaning that you do not have to trust centralized authorities to store your money. This privilege, however, comes with a high degree of responsibility, and Thomas now believes that it is not worth it. So here's a quote. This whole idea of being your own bank, let me put it this way. Do you make your own shoes? The reason we have banks is that we don't want to deal with all those things that banks do. There you go. And so, you know, my stance on that has always been there's going to be some people that do want to be their own bank and they should be able to, to do that if they want. It's it's uh, more risky, clearly. And there will be people that will never want to take the responsibility of holding their own crypto in, in, a, in a private wallet. And that should be fine, too. You know, I, 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 that's, that's, that's another reason, like, it's a whole Bitcoin maxi uh, you know, utopia of theirs where, where banks just go away. I'm like, no, people don't want banks to go away. Some people do. Maybe you do. But there's always going to be a purpose, including loans on top of that. So, like, things will evolve. You know, what a bank does today, maybe it's going to look different in another 5, 10, 15, 20 years and so on and so forth. But they're not going away. They'll, they'll never go away. There's always going to be something for them to do. Anyway, the piece continues. 
All of the coins were gifted to the German native in 2011 for simply making an educational video about Bitcoin. Thomas lost his seed phrase that is necessary for unlocking his crypto riches the same year. Think about that. Uh, oh, you made an educational video about Bitcoin. Here's $231 million. <laughs> now, I know it wasn't worth that back then, but it's just funny to think. Holy hell. Anyway, after eight unsuccessful attempts to gain access to his wallet, Thomas now has two attempts left before his wallet gets encrypted forever. <laughs> you think he's going to try the last two? Here's a quote. I would just lay in bed and think about it. Then I would go to the computer with some new strategy and it wouldn't work and I would be desperate again. I got to a point where I said to myself, let it be in the past just for your own mental health. That's crazy. So the wallet that he's using is set that if you <laughs> unsuccessfully try to access it 10 times, it's encrypted forever. Ooh, God, that's crazy. You, you can do that to an iPhone, too. You know, I don't know if you can do it with Android, maybe. But, um, you know, I've had that option. I have never done that because I'm just like, mm, no. And, and even if it gets it's, uh, stolen or something like that, okay, yeah, somebody tries to you know, incorrectly enter your password 10 times. Uh, maybe you'd like it to, but it's like the whole the whole phone would just be reformatted. Uh, but I, I was always like, mm, nah, I'm not comfortable with that. And I know obviously this is substantially more important. I'm just, I'm just saying, but just the idea of that, if it were me even back then, I think I would have probably felt uncomfortable with a setup like that. Uh, wow. Well, I, it would be, wouldn't it be a cool story though, if somehow he does get back and he's got two attempts left before it's just gone forever. What if, what if he does take another stab at it and actually get, that would be an incredible story. I don't know if that's likely at this point, but I wish him the best, and I, I, that would be fantastic if that would happen for him. But anyway. All right, uh, so into this. This is from Cryptocurrency Exchange GitHub, which, by the way, is the first place I ever got my first XRP in uh, November of 2017. Back then, if you were in the United States anyway, it was hard to find a place to purchase XRP, and I uh, first went with GitHub. So fun little side note. I haven't really used them since then, but uh, anyway. Announcement to XRP holders, January 12th, 2021. We have carefully reviewed the complaint that the SEC filed in federal district court in New York, alleging Ripple's XRP should have been registered as a security upon its creation in 2012, uh, more than eight years ago, and charging that Ripple and its senior managers later engaged in market manipulation and self-dealing. Please be advised that GitHub LTD will continue listing XRP until the SEC's complaint against Ripple is adjudicated and a final decision entered that XRP is properly classified as a security or until we receive a cease and desist notice from the SEC. Uh, we have never believed that XRP is a security under the prevailing Howey test in the U.S. and regard XRP primarily as a utility token, whose value is based on its use in payments in foreign exchange, nor have we personally witnessed any improper market conduct by Ripple Labs or its senior uh, officers. Um, our own business decision to list XRP and our attempt to build a payments business using XRP on the XRP ledger reflects this good faith belief. Think about that. So they're doing their own thing with it, and the SEC just wants to make it so that they can't. They want the SEC is actively seeking to destroy the utility of XRP, the genuine utility. It's disgusting. I just, I just can't imagine this will ultimately stand. Anyway, I'll, I'll continue. Uh, we would not have proceeded to build a business with the XRP ledger ecosystem if the SEC had issued any guidance whatsoever that XRP would be treated as an unregistered security, and we would have refused to do business with Ripple or anyone at Ripple who, in our judgment, engaged in fraudulent market practices. Shortly after its development by Ripple's founders in 2012, the software that drives the XRP ledger was open sourced and made available to developers free of charge and is hosted on numerous third-party servers around the world. Similarly, the client-side software can be downloaded and used by end users on their own mobile phones or computers. This is a distributed blockchain technology, and in theory, Ripple Labs could close tomorrow, but the ledger and the recording of XRP transactions onto the ledger through the consensus process would continue. 
if Ripple and or its senior executives defrauded individual investors, they should be subject to appropriate enforcement actions and be forced to disgorge any ill-gotten gains. But that is a far cry from an action by the SEC classifying X, uh, XRP as a security with potentially catastrophic consequences for individual investors who did nothing wrong. We remain optimistic about the future of XRP and hope that this litigation, however disruptive in the short term, will bring clarity to the appropriate treatment of cryptocurrencies under the U.S. securities law. But bam, I love that. Uh, so yeah, they're they're steadfast. I like that. That's that's uh, that's what I call a little bit of a little bit of trailblazing right there. And uh, they're absolutely in the right. Think about this. You're building a business around this. You know that the SEC has allowed the sale of XRP by Ripple for the better part of a decade, and then to come down on them right now when XRP is at the its most decentralized that it's ever been. It's it's disgusting. I'm repulsed by this, but. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons, again, I'm just going to continue to hold. There's no way to know for sure what's going to happen. Holding XRP is now more risky. I'll always acknowledge that. But um, I'd feel worse if I didn't have my exposure to XRP. Because once this gets settled, if it goes the way that I think and hope that it will, then, uh, you know, people are going to realize just how supremely undervalued XRP is relative to the rest of the crypto markets. And I think that could really uh, do some interesting stuff in terms of price action. But we're just going to have to wait and see, won't we? I'll wrap up there, though. Thank you for stopping by, my friends. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.